Shabbat Shalom. We had a, a wonderful eruption of Jewish celebration in the month of Tishrei, uh, the Jewish New Year, which uh, usually falls in September or maybe uh, early October. Uh, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, uh, Sukkot, uh, Shemini Atzeret, Simchat Torah, um, huge amount of celebrating that goes on at that time of year. And then something of a lull for the next couple of months until we get to the 25th day of Kislev, which is Hanukkah. And then after Hanukkah, really another lull uh, until we get into the springtime and the celebration of Purim. So what lies in between Hanukkah and Purim is the new year of the trees, Tu Bishvat. Now, um, in Jewish law, Tu Bishvat, the 15th day of the month of Shvat, is literally the new year of the fruits that are taxed in terms of the uh, support of the temple. And so uh, this is really a, a fiscal calculation. But since there is no temple, the New Year of the Trees has taken on a whole different tenor over the course of the centuries. Now we think in more spiritual terms, we think of the time in the dead of winter when the sap in the trees is starting to rise and the trees themselves are starting to wake up in a way that uh, is invisible to the eye but can be felt in the inner reaches of the consciousness of trees, if you believe in the consciousness of trees, which I do. And uh, I think it's a deeply meaningful celebration, particularly here in Winnipeg. Uh, We've had a warm winter uh, until a couple weeks ago. Uh, Suddenly now it's cold, and we're having a real uh, spate of January weather. And we look outside, and everything is under a blanket of snow, and there's not really much green to be seen anywhere. And one could think, if one weren't knowledgeable about these things, that all the vegetation really had died. But Tu Bishvat reminds us that in spite of the outer appearance of death, deep within the tree, life is bubbling and life is beginning to rise again. And in just a few months, spring will arrive and then there's this miraculous transformation when suddenly everything becomes lush and green and and alive once again. So it's a lesson that we can take for all of life, really. Uh, I always like to emphasize during funerals, yes, uh, at the time of a funeral, the victory of death seems to be very complete, but hidden from the surface and deep within the consciousness of even the deceased, I believe that life is still bubbling on some level. There is this reality of the soul and the spirit that survives and is resurrected, actually, at the time of death in a way that... Life goes on in a beautiful way that may not be so apparent to the physical eye, but perhaps you can feel it deep inside. And Tu Bishvat is like that for trees. And in fact, the uh, Kabbalists, the Jewish mystics of Tzvat in the 16th century, they originated what's called a Tu Bishvat Seder. We have celebrated these things in the past here in Winnipeg. Basically, it's a celebration of the four worlds of Kabbalah as symbolized by the different kinds of fruits, and the different kinds of fruit juices that one can drink. It's a beautiful Seder. I find that uh, it does enliven that, that inner level of spirit, which is really the essence, I would say, of all Jewish celebration. So I want to wish you all uh, a wonderful Tu Bishvat when it comes in a, about 10 days from now. And uh, I also want to wish you, of course, a beautiful, peaceful Sabbath. Perhaps you can enjoy Sabbath here at Shari Tzedek, We have a new short format for the Shabbat service, filled with singing, filled with joy. I personally find it very moving. I know that others do too. Even in the dead of winter, when we used to get very low attendance here, uh, the service attracts uh, a good number of people, and perhaps you should think about becoming one of them. Again, I want to wish you a Shabbat Shalom. (laughs) 